Welcome to Tremendous Talk. We got the industry, tea, and the jokes. Actors, directors, musicians, and more. You're listening to Tremendous Talk. Hello! Hey guys, I'm Law. And I'm Ash, and this is a Tremendous Talk podcast. Each week, join us as we guide you through the realms of Hollywood and beyond while we speak to industry professionals in the spotlight. So grab a bubble tea and leave your shoes at the door. Welcome to Tremendous Talk. Well, everything changes because the Fire Nation attacks this week. And luckily, we on the podcast, we have someone who can help us with that. We are speaking to Maria Zhang. Uh, You may know her as playing Suki, the leader of the Kyoshi Warriors of the Earth Kingdom in the live action series of Avatar The Last Airbender, now streaming on Netflix. Yes. La, are you an Avatar kid? Like, did you grow up watching the cartoon? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I got my (laughs) Appa today. I got another (laughs) Appa back there. I have an Appa bucket hat. But yeah, I've I've cosplayed Sokka. I've cosplayed Zuko. Um, I remember photoshopping my dog into Appa as well one time. Like I, I love the Avatar series and I really like the uh, the uh, live action too. I'm, I'm just a happy Avatar fan these days. Mm, what tribe yeah. are you in? Or oh. what's your what's your air bend? What's your bender type? <laughs> I've been told that I would be a fire or earth bender, but I desperately wish I was a water bender. Yeah. Really? It's so interesting, like how we self-identify and how other people perceive us. Yes, I know. Yeah. It's like when we were kids, people would always be like, you're going to be Raphael when we played Ninja Turtles. And I was like, I don't want to be Raphael. And that's exactly why they <laughs> gave me that. But, you know, over time and therapy, I finally secured my Michelangelo. <laughs> or <laughs> every na- depending on the group, sometimes I'm the Leo. Uh, but what about you? What is your what is the bending type? What what nation are you from? I think I'm air all the way, man. No question ah. about it. That's a tough one because I think you need to have like so much compassion and like you lean more pacifist. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I feel I feel like I am so far from air, which is probably <laughs> why I'm fine. <laughs> Maybe that's why we balance each other out on the podcast. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Balance, right? Oh, yeah. Balance of the four nations. Together we reach Avatar State. Yes, that's it. That's how, it is. <laughs> that's how we're rolling with it today. Oh, man. <laughs> but today we are diving into all things fierce with Maria, man. I, I can't wait for this. Suki is one of my favorite characters in the entire Avatar universe. Oh, I, I so just good. I can't wait to talk to her about like just being in this incredible TV show, working on this like legendary character that we've seen on TV for what, like two decades now, or however long Avatar has been out. Like we know this TV show, man, like we lived it. We've been with it for so long. And this cast is beautiful. What a beautiful cast yeah. of people. Oh, we are talking about everything with her and just working on this beloved series and so much more. Absolutely. We are so excited to have you. Welcome to the podcast, the Tremendous Talk podcast, Maria Jung. <laughs> yeah! Let's go. Cool. Thank yeah. you so much for for joining us and and uh, and giving us some time to talk, you know, Avatar and your career and all that stuff. But yeah, so excited to have you, first of all. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when we get started, uh, you know, a tremendous talk, we love highlighting, you know, uh, BIPOC talent and, and, and just like anyone who's like pushing themselves in the entertainment industry. We love highlighting that. But before we start, we have to do a little speed round. So, Ash. Ash has got some quick questions for you. All right. I'm going to mess up your slow morning. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. What's your favorite drink order? It could be a boba tea or a coffee or anything or like a whiskey, oh. anything you like. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, well, coffee, usually a latte. Um, boba, I always get like just a normal tea without the milk, but with the cream, salty cream foam on top. Ah. That's, really oh, well, that's very specific. I like, <laughs> I like the specificity of it. Okay. What's your comfort food? Comfort food, probably Chinese food, reminds me of right. home. Um, good hot pot. Yeah, have some friends over. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wait. Okay. So, what was your favorite meal growing up that your parents made? Probably, have you had like century egg porridge? Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my gosh. It's like, oh, it's like, wow. you either like it or don't like it. <laughs> I love it. It's, it's very like comfort food, breakfast. Oh. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Now, whenever I hear of Century Eggs, I just think of Joyride and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's a show you're currently binge watching? I haven't binged something in a while. I know I need to get on Baby Reindeer, but that's uh, the second time that's come up on this podcast. Up, we'll yeah. keep mentioning it. Um, I, I guilty, my guilty pleasure is Love Island. I think it's okay. great. It's the perfect mindless show. <laughs> so now <laughs> I guess like when I do have time and I want to kind of decompress from work and all that, that's what I hop on to. <laughs> I get oh. that. I'm a singles inferno rewatch. Oh, I need to watch the new season. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are so cute. Everyone has everyone in the entertainment industry, I think, just like needs to shut their brains off. And we all Some have our guilty reality. pleasures. Yeah, I like yeah. Disneyland vlogs. So <laughs> Disneyland vlogs. <laughs> oh, cute. <laughs> so lame. OK, and then if you could be any sort of bender, what bender would you be or what element would you take? Yeah, I've, I've gotten a couple of questions like this. It's always like choosing which one. So I think like water is what I think would be the most useful. But like, who would I be based on my personality? I actually think Earth Kingdom. Yeah, you know. Ash and I just had this conversation where it's like, I desperately want to be water, but I'm probably like a fire bender. Okay. You know, like <laughs> you know what I mean? I desperately also want to be water, but I feel like I'm an earth bender. Water tribe. That's what I'm saying. Oh, uh, this is <laughs> cute. <laughs> Amazing. Well, first of all, you know, I, I love Avatar Last Airbender growing up, and, and I thought the live action was fantastic. Uh, I, I really enjoyed just like seeing the press tours and everything. Actually, I need to flex this. I don't know if you could see this, but that's me as Kyoshi Warrior Sokka. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I'm so, so great. Suki For the people and... listening and not viewing, Law just turned out a bunch of cosplays of him in the Avatar universe. Yes, I did. The first wow. time I met Ian, I pulled out my phone and I was like, look, I've been Sokka before. He, <laughs> he was just like, hey, pretty cool, man. And then, you know, uh, but that said, right now you're doing a, like a bunch of convention circuits and you're make, having a lot of face time with Avatar fans. And I'm I'm curious, is like, what have you discovered about the fandom that makes you really excited to continue the legacy of Avatar as as you continue to portray Suki, which you do beautifully, by the way? Oh, thank you. Um, no, it's been it's been so nice just getting to talk to the fans in person, like meeting people. And I've met a couple like babies that were named after avatar characters i met a katara <laughs> like their whole family are like huge avatar fans like dogs named after like characters as well and and i don't know it's just been so wonderful seeing like the, the how much this you know ip means to people like of all ages of like all generations different races like it so but getting to talk to them about suki and how um, they feel like, you know, I did her justice as much as pressure was to kind of, <laughs> I mean, yeah, bring her to life, but, um, like hearing how excited they are for what's to come, like Toph, like all the rest of the adventures and kind of, yeah. So, so I guess it's just a lot of excitement and, and, and it's been so nice to just talk to people and, and see what they are excited for, like specific episodes and stuff. Like they were like, Oh, I can't wait to see like the Ember Island play. And I was like, that, yeah, me too. That's <laughs> going to be too. funny. <laughs> oh, uh, it, it just makes me so happy. Cause I was an avatar kid growing up too. Like I watched every single, rewatched it all the time and everything too. And just the way it came to life was really, really, really beautiful. And I love, I don't know, in this episode, there's so much beautiful, beautiful grounded nature in like the Earth Kingdom. And when we meet the Kyoshi warriors and everything, can you talk a little bit about the relationship with your co-stars? Like especially Tamlin Tamita, that she plays your mom and you two have this beautiful, beautiful chemistry together. Like I feel like you are actually related. <laughs> oh, I love Tamlin. No, shout out Tamlin Tamina. She's one of the OGs in the community. It's the 30th anniversary for Joy Luck Club, actually. Crazy, yeah. um, and I mean, happy Mother's Day to her as well. I just texted her yesterday to my on screen mom. <laughs> um she's i mean she was such a joy to work with i think i i just was so nervous to like you know meet her and work with her i was also a huge teen wolf fan so like, i i was like i only told her this recently i was like oh you know like i love teen wolf and she was like what do you mean you never told me why well, i don't want to seem like you know <laughs> um no she's she's such she's become such a wonderful like mentor to me i i feel like you know first day on set like i mean even before we started working she just would hit me up and was like hey 
hey, like, wanna, I want to get to know you. Let's get waffles downstairs. Like, <laughs> and we ended up talking for like hours, just getting to know each other and, and hearing about her background, her acting career and, and everything. And um, I don't know, I just feel like she brought so much like more for for Suki as well. I feel like getting a mother figure, it, it also like make totally makes sense that a woman would be a leader of the island. And um, she just has such like grace in her that it was just so easy to work off of. I, I felt like she was my mom. Like, and, and I think that kind of struggle Suki deals with between the responsibility of staying at her island, which the way she, you know, wants to uphold all the values and, and protect her people and, and what her mom has taught me, taught her all her life. Um, versus like being a young girl wanting to explore the rest of the world. I think that just added so much more to that dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you know, we're all mixed Asian here. You know, I'm Filipino, Indian, Ash is a white and hey. Filipino mixed, right? And uh, something that we always talk about is kind of our identity and like where we belong in community. And as you kind of navigate this space, like, and you know, like Tamlin is a great mentor to you, right? You just uh, you mentioned that, but where have you been able to find your sense of community so far, having not necessarily seen yourself in media growing up? Um, yeah. And like, what part of this place are you carving out for yourself, I guess? Yeah, um, well, I grew up in Beijing, so I I rarely saw mixed people, actually. I, I felt like, oh, okay, like, even when I decided to act, my parents were like, oh, are you sure? Like, I feel like usually they want someone that's fully Chinese or like, but um, I actually met Chloe Bennett at the last convention and she's so lovely. And it was very like an inner child part of me because she was like the first um mix Asian actress that I saw on, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I remember like watching it with like Chinese subtitles before I even learned English. And it was just such a nice full circle moment. So that was like the kind of the first person I saw on on media. But like now seeing the rest, like how many mix Asian people there are, like even just walking around L.A., like I think that was like kind of a shock to me and and it was just so wonderful like feeling like okay like i'm not alone like there's i mean the future is mixed i feel like um and yeah just who i've got to meet along the way whether to work with or at events and and um i feel like it's such a small and tight community of asians that um are in the entertainment industry and and it's just you know wonderful how we all uplift each other and um yeah, I'm still, I guess, like meeting people along the way. Helen's definitely a great mentor. Um, I've also had some just wonderful professors while I went to USC who I still yeah. reach out to now. Just like, yeah. <laughs> you Aww. said two things that are like right up my alley. One is that I always say the future is mixed. <laughs> I try to tell mixed. people all the time. <laughs> and then Chloe Bennett. What a sweetheart. I remember one of my first red carpets, she called me beautiful. Oh, and, and I'll never <laughs> like that was she's like one of my top celebrity crushes. I have a poster of her somewhere in this room, uh, mm -hmm. but amazing. Thanks for sharing that. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that makes me so happy. I I just I have to give a shout out like you played your character like you gave us one episode out of this eight episodes. But you just stuck with me so much mm. because of your nuanced nature. Like I saw every version of myself as a girl growing up and what you did in your performance, like the struggles between wanting to be a good daughter for your mother and and just like being a girl and having crushes and being curious about things. And also this like duty and responsibility for your people and for your like community and stuff like Gosh, it was it was so beautiful and nuanced. And I just I want to give you your flowers for that because that was oh. freaking beautiful, man. Thank you so much. No, I absolutely. Yeah, no, it's like it's been so wonderful hearing from like women, like what they how they feel about Suki. And I've had little girls come up to me at conventions, like I got bracelets and stuff, and they were like, "I I just love Suki because I feel like she's like a girl, and like I want to fight, like learn to fight like her." And I'm just like, ah, <laughs> that just <laughs> makes me so happy because that's that's like a big thing I wanted to bring out in Suki is that not just is she like. A fighting warrior who can kick butts all around but it's just vulnerable and can be you know it deals with the same things that every girl deals with not just young girls older women like just wanting to like it doesn't it, they can coexist i guess being like a strong woman but also having her own vulnerable desires and wanting to explore and all that yeah 
Absolutely. And I love that moment in the episode, too, where you take your mask off like you there's an like you turn your back and, and your makeup is off. And oh, I just like I got chills watching it. Yes, it was beautiful. <laughs> but can you can you share with us? Like I, I watched the episode. and I was like, this is Suki. Like you are. I was just blown away by the amazing, amazing casting. Can you kind of talk about like in what ways do you personally resonate with Suki? Like how in your character journey, like did you find ways to identify with her like in your in your personal life or anything, too? Hmm. Well, yeah, I kind of touched on it. I feel like just, um, yeah, the way I think I decided to move across the world <laughs> and pursue my acting career, leaving my family behind. I feel like that was a big part of feeling like, oh my gosh, like I could, I should stay home. And, and I grew up um, kind of training to be like a visual artist and it's what I was good at and, and, but not what I was passionate about. And um, so that I feel like kind of like feeling responsibility to stick to your roots and, and not scared of venturing out, but, but also needing to, because of this, you know, passion I had and, um, for Suki, you know, also, like I said, like being, you know, strong, but at the same time, like having, like seeing a boy for the first time and wanting to, you know, like <laughs> see the rest of the world. I feel like that is such a cool part that the writers wonderfully brought out in her that I got to work with. And, um, you know, getting to know um, the comics around the show as well. There's a wonderful comic about Suki called Suki Alone. It talks about her time at Boiling Rock and it kind of goes to flashbacks of her childhood and, you know, friends she's made and how she's always been like, this is the way of the island, you know, like we don't venture out, we don't do this. And I think that was, that was, came from fear of, of mm -hmm. being attacked by rightfully so you know very innate dangers in in their world but um but also uh not being kind of scared to embrace how how scary it is to venture out both as like you know the kyoshi island opening up the, themselves to the rest of the world as tamlin kind of talks about in the episode but also just as a girl wanting to explore um yeah so those were just certain things that i was dealing with <laughs> <laughs> what a role model character. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, um, you've done stage before, obviously, right? And like I I know you did your web series and now you're doing this like series on TV. I'm curious, like for you as a creative, as someone who does have a passion for the craft of acting, right? What fills your bucket most? Is there anything that outweighs the other or do you kind of just see them as different avenues to fulfill the soul i guess mm -hmm. different avenues i i think i want to do all of it I, I grew up doing theater um back in poland and china and then that usc um and it's definitely like a different bucket <laughs> i feel like I, I do sometimes miss you know the energy of actually being in the room and this bubble that gets you know created when you're doing a play or, or something live um but yeah I, I think it's all just different things you know i i love how collaborative film and TV is, I think a little more than theater. And in the case of like, there's so many more compartments to it that comes together. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not like one, you know, I, I gravitate towards more. I think I want to do all of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> and then I want to take it back a little bit about representation too, right? Like we grew up with this cartoon TV show that we became so obsessed with and we love so deeply. And then we got this live action by M. Night Shyamalan that had some in interesting <laughs> casting choices as I about the movie. <laughs> would say. But I gotta admit, dude, like the casting in this series continuously, continuously blows me away. Like, did you feel any sort of pressure when it came to that representation after getting such a wonderful cartoon animated series and then going to the M. Night Shyamalan and then having this Netflix situation? Like, how did it feel in the casting process? The bar was low, I feel like, after the movie. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, yes, but I mean... I, I actually, I, I, people have asked me, you know, have I was I a fan before the show, but I actually watched it when I started auditioning because I just, you know, I grew up in China and I never heard of the show. <laughs> and I've had a couple, when I came here for, for school, I've had a few people mention it and I was like, oh, what is it? It's like a kid's show. And <laughs> like, I just didn't know how good it was. Um, and then I started watching it and I kept watching 
<laughs> before I even found out that I got the role because I was like, this is so great. This is not like a kid's show. Um, and I think that kind of helped with the pressure because I feel like if I knew how big of a deal it was and how much I would love it and how much I would love Suki specifically too. I think if I watched it before auditioning, it should probably still be my favorite. Um, would, you know, like I would probably feel a lot more pressure. <laughs> I still did, I think, but it's just, it was also my first project out of college where, you know, it's like an all Asian and indigenous cast, even the the people behind the camera, like the crew, like people will show up in costumes from like, just why not? Like someone would show up in an appa onesie <laughs> just to like, <laughs> Why not? <laughs> We're working on Avatar. Might as well. Um, no, it was. I, I think it's. It's. It was just such a surreal experience that you know nothing will top this. <laughs> and you know, like getting mentors through it, like Tamlin, DDK, like just an insane cast of like iconic people from the Asian and Indigenous community, and and that part of it, I think, is is just so wonderful and something I knew they the creators like were definitely set on putting in. <laughs> Is there anything about kind of like, you know, you mentioned USC a couple times mm. and uh, obviously like, like something like a Netflix production must feel so grand and mm -hmm. huge based like compared to, you know, the like kind of a homegrown project. Um, yeah. But is there anything that you learned from like an indie pro like the indie process of filmmaking or even your web series that you're carrying on to like these bigger productions or any kind of lessons that you take with you well uh, yeah i've done a couple shorts uh and i think to me it, it as grand of a like scale a production can be it all just comes down to the story and it doesn't i think i come from it i treat them the same in terms of my preparation slash like you know how i relate to the character and all that and um I think I, as I, you know, go on to bigger sets like this, I, I try to remember, you know, creating with my friends at USC and like just how that felt and how the excitement and, and um, the community have built through those smaller projects. Um, yeah, just like remembering kind of where I came from, <laughs> humbling myself in that way and then taking that onto um, the wonderful opportunities that I get in the future. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Usually before we wrap up, we we like to give you a space to kind of share whatever you want. We pass the mic over. So whether that's, you know, promoting something you have going on and you just want to talk about what's going on in your life or any advice you might give to any young creatives listening, um, the floor is yours. I'm going to give give you the microphone. Oh, okay. right here. <laughs> I just noticed your op up in. That's great. <laughs> I also have like a little op. Uh, you can't really see it from this far away, but that's op with the gang flying. Oh my gosh. I'm obs I am obsessed with Avatar. I've tried to play it, play it cool today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm very, very obsessed. That's yes. Awesome. Is there okay. anything that um, you'd like to share? Uh, yes. Okay. I have a short in the works that just premiered. It's called Made in USA. It's a part of AFI's DWW Plus program. It's um, written and directed by this wonderful Taiwanese American director, Desdemona Chiang. Um, it's about Chinese birth tourism. And I play a pregnant teenager. Uh, she's snobby, she's she's bratty, she uh, has a rich dad and is entitled, and it's, it's super fun. And hopefully it will be out for people to see soon. It's making kind of the festival circuits right now um otherwise i don't know advice like just i don't know like keep at it whatever you're doing um i think i i'm glad i followed my dreams and and kind of went with my gut in terms of pursuing acting and and i think that can be applied to any any everything else that people decide to do <laughs> and any upcoming kiyoshi warriors too yeah. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Ash had a great quote from the episode. What matters is not the power inside. It's the will and desire the heart. That's a great way to end the episode. I yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank you, Maria. Those Thank you. Uh, I got to also give it up to you for not Edward scissoring your hands like <laughs> during those fan the sequences. <laughs> like, oh, there goes my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I know those were crazy I, and you know they added the special effects later it looks very like actually like metal they were they were actually made out of cloth but still I was like 
uh, we broke a couple <laughs> of them. They had a whole bucket of them ready for me. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I may have taken one with me. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love learning about souvenirs people take. That's good. The fans is a good one. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your, your morning with us. Yeah, yes. thank you so much. This is wonderful. The Tremendous Talk Podcast is produced by Lawrence Sharma, Ashley Rapuano Sanchez, Gabriela David, Joseph Peralde, and Jeremiah Abraham in collaboration with Tremendous. The Tremendous Talk Podcast jingle is by Jared Sanchez and Ashley Rapuano Sanchez, produced at Hamsterdam Records.